Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. In this lesson, we are going to learn to set up and solve equations for story problems. First, let's actually practice translating some sentences. We're going to write the equation that describes each of the statement. First one, 6 less than 37 times of a number x is negative 11. So, first we see this 6 less than. 6 less than means we're comparing something with uh, something else. And we need to be clear, what are we comparing to? We are comparing to 37 times of a number x. So if the number is x, and we have 37 times of it, that will be 37x. And when it's 6 less than that, that means we're going to subtract 6. And it says is, the word is typically is the equal sign, so is negative 11. So there you go, that's the first one. The second one, the sum of 9 fifth of a number x and 19 times of a number y is 72. Whenever we have the sum of, that means we need two numbers so that we can actually, at least two numbers, so we can actually calculate the sum. So the first number is 9 fifth of a number x. So it's going to be 9 fifth of x. The word of typically is multiplication. And then it says 19 times of a number y. So that is our second number which is 19 times of y. Since the sum of them, we're going to add them together. Then we see the word is, which is the equal sign, so equals 72. Now you can pause here and try to see if you can translate C, D, and E. Let's have a look. 4 less than a number x. A number x. So 4 less than that is x minus 4. And then it says is twice of the number x. Twice of number x, that would be 2x. The word is, is uh, equal sign again, so x minus 4 equals 2x. 7 times of the sum of a number x and 8. So we see the sum of, that means we need to identify at least two different numbers after that wording. A number x and 8. So x and 8 together, and it's the sum of them, that's where we're adding them. But it says it's 7 times of that. So 7 times of the x plus 8 together. The word is, is the equal sign, equals 14. The difference between 4 times of number y and 7 is 6. The difference between, that's the wording that prompts us to find at least two different numbers. First one is 4 times of a number y, so 4y. And then at 7, since we're calculating the difference between, we're going to subtract 7. And that has to equals, the word is, equals 6. There we go. These are some sentence, sentence translation practice. Now let's move on to the story problems. James Bikes rents bikes for $11.10 plus $7.20 per hour. Arjun paid $54.30 to rent a bike. For how many hours did he rent a bike? It's asking to write an equation to present the scenario and then uh, solve the equation and answer the question. So the eleven dollars and uh, ten cents is almost like it's it's just a fee that you have to pay in order to be to uh, rent a bike, and then it start to count by hours, seven point two per hour. Eventually, it's asking for how many hours we so you can set it as h to represent the hours. Since it's seven point two per hour, that means the seven point two number is related to the hour, so it's seven point two h. $11.10 is a fee that you have to pay, so it's $11.10 plus however long you're going to rent the bike for. And that is going to equal 54.30 because that's uh, how much Arjun paid. And now we can actually solve that by subtracting 11, uh, 10 on both sides. So we got 7.2H equals uh, 43.20. Divide both sides by a 7.2. We can see h equals 6. Don't forget a unit. Hours. There you go. That's example 2. Example 3. Bill spent a third of his monthly allowance on food. To earn more money, he mows the neighbor's lawn for $15. He ended with $52. Write an equation to present the situation and is asking you to solve the equation. So, oh, actually, there should be a question for this. The question is, how much did he, was his actually month allowance? How much was Phil's monthly 
blocks. Okay, now let's say the monthly allowance um, box since is money, let's use letter M to present, or you can use letter A since it's monthly allowance. Either way, uh, he spent a third of his monthly allowance. If he spent a third, that means he has two thirds left. So that will be two thirds M. That's how much he had, he had left. Then he earned more money. He earned $15 on top of how much he earned, he already had left. So it's plus 15, he ended up with $52. So end up with is also another wording for is, which means equal sign. Subtract 15 on both sides. We got two thirds M equals 37. Now, in order to get rid of the two thirds, you can choose to multiply by a three first, or, and then divided by two, or you can just multiply by the inverse, uh, which is also the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply both sides by three halves. That was to cancel out the two thirds. So we got M equals actually 55.5. I mean, typically you should keep a fraction, but we don't do fraction with money. So that's why we typically round uh, or actually keep the decimals. So there we go. His monthly allowance is uh, $55.50. That's example three. Example four, a car rental company charges $200 per week plus $0.35 per mile to rent a car. How many miles can you travel in one week for $525.75? Uh, no, so $200 is the base fee that you have to pay, and then you're counting by the miles, and it's asking for how many miles you can travel. So let's say M represents miles. Okay. We have the $200 that we have to pay. So this question is very similar to the bike question. And then we're adding on to the mile mileage fee. So it's three, 35 cents per mile. So we're going to times with uh, how many miles you actually traveled and it has to be 525 and 75 cents. Subtract the 200 over. We got 0.35 M equals 325.75. And then we're going to divide both sides by a 0.35. You should actually get the M as, let's round to two decimal places for this one. That should be 930.71. The next digit should be a four. That's why we are keeping it. So it's 930.71 uh, miles. Don't forget a unit. That's very good. That's example four. Moving on, example five. The current population of a si small city is 27,000 people. Due to a loss of jobs, the population is decreasing by an average of 150 people per year. How many years from now will it take for the population to decrease to 18,000? So it's decreasing and the starting point is 27,000. I think I'm, uh, it's very similar to the previous questions. Um, so I'm going to ask you to pause here and try it. Hopefully you have tried. 27,000 is what we start with and is asking for years. So let's say letter Y represents years. Okay. And it's decreasing by an average of 150 people per year. Decreasing means we're subtracting 150 people per year. So 150 Y eventually is going to decrease to 18,000. So it equals 18,000. Let's subtract 27,000 on both sides. Got negative 150y equals negative 9,000. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 150. And that's going to get us y equals 60. Don't forget a unit. 60 years. That's example five. Example six. You are building a 50 foot long retaining wall for your friend. To make sure the wall is stable, you need a good foundation of material called road base. The foundation should be 8 inches thick and 12 inches wide. How much road base in cubic inches do you need to buy to have a stable foundation? Write an equation to present this scenario. So it's asking how much road base. So let's say uh, we want R to present road base. And but don't forget the unit is cubic inches. Okay, everything that are given to you is inches, 8 inches and 12 inches. So we have the, the thickness and the, the width. 
And at the beginning, you were given 50 foot long. So we got to convert that 50 foot long into inches is 50 times 12, which is 600 inches. So we actually have the length, the width, and the thickness is basically the height. So in order for you to calculate the how much road base, you are actually calculating the volume. The volume of in this in this situation is a wall, so it's a rectangular prism. It is length times width times height. So our length is going to be six hundred, and the width is going to be uh no not plus multiply. The width is I mean the width in this case is twelve. And the height, which is the thickness, is 8. We're just multiplying them together. And that should give you a 57,600 inches. So we're actually calculating the volume. Uh, inches cubed. There you go. That's example 6. Moving on, example 7. A uh, rock around the office building, uh, which is a half circle shape and a rectangle. So Joe has a square shaped office building. Square shape. The building is 30 feet wide. So 30 and 30. He wants to put a circle of decorative rock around his office so that the uh, so that he has 10 feet of rock around the building. What is the area in square feet? that the rock will cover. So it's, when it says around the building, it's not exactly around the building like every single direction and you're just making another square. It's actually a circle. So that means we actually want it to just be 10 feet away from the base of the building. So it's basically saying this is 10 feet, also 10 feet here, another 10 feet here, and another 10 feet here. And that is where we actually get the circle. So that's kind of a, a setup for this problem. This side is not a circle. There you go. So it's basically 10 feet uh, all around. What is the area in square feet that the rock will cover? So one thing you have to be clear, the building does not have a rock under it. So we're technically just calculating this shape, which is a circle getting rid of a square in the middle. So let's deal with a circle first. If the building is 30 feet wide, so that means this portion in the middle is actually 30 feet wide. So we can easily see the diameter of the circle. It's the 10 and the 30 and the 10. So the diameter of the circle is actually going to be 50 feet, which means the radius of the circle, which is half of the diameter, is going to be 25 feet. So in order to calculate the area of the shaded part, we're going to have to calculate the area of a circle first. So the area of the circle is going to be pi r squared, which is pi times 25 squared. And then we need the area of the square. And that is just the middle. The square is a 30 by 30, so it's 30 squared. And in order to calculate the area of the rock, is going to be the area of the circle subtracting the area of the square, which is 625 pi. So this is the 625 pi, and the area of the square is 900. So subtracting 900, and I'm going to round to two decimal places. That's going to give us 1,063.50. Don't forget a unit. Everything is in feet, and this area so it's feet square. And that's the example seven. That's everything for this first story problem lesson. Thank you.